Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where it's about TV shows that are supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Evil. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode. A lot of weird and creepy things went down in this episode. Well, first and foremost, let's start off with the whole situation with David. I love that, like, um, Leland is getting, um, et- like, you know, um, they're doing an exorcism and everything, and he's just like, ah, and he looks at David, does the eyebrow things, and he's sticking his tongue out, like, ah, oh, I'm like, I was like, he's such a dick, I like that, like, obviously in season one, I felt like he was a lot more sinister, now he's kind of got that goofy sinister to him, because, like, he's going, like, oh, he's so goofy, and so, ah, oh, you hate him, but you like him a little bit, because he's so goofy and effed up, but at the same time, it's like, he says some really effed up things, because he's trying to corrupt David, Little by little, it's like, right, if I can't necessarily get Kristen to necessarily do it by getting close to him, I can kind of do it a little by little by pointing out some of the issues with the church he's so in love with, this whole religion he's so in love with and everything. Obviously, he puts on the cross and everything, and it's like, oh, what were you hoping that I'd burn? He's like, I have no expectations, because now David's been put in position of being his um, spiritual um, counselor. Um which I love that he's like, I didn't sign up for this, but I, the job kind of got thrown at me. Which is interesting because David has a constant point out, like, you know my history with this dude, yet you got, like, okay. But I think also for him, it's like, right, the closer I, like, you know, Leland thinks he's getting close to me, I'm keeping Leland close. That the moment he slips up, I'm on him. But Leland's pretty good at this, so he's not going to, you know, be that easy to kind of catch and slip up. But I love him putting on the the cross, and he's like, ah, oh, ah, oh. he's like, ah, oh. ah. Oh pretending like it's hurting him and he's like how do I look I'm like oh he's such a dick but then he starts pointing out obviously it's like oh yeah like you know in America alone like how many black priests are there actually in the church and it's like oh no like 200 something and he's just kind of pointing out a lot of like some of the like racism that has existed and he's kind of basically saying like and that becomes an interesting aspect to it um to the episode is like the subtle like oh like like obviously like for his thing he's bringing up race but the Dylan Baker's goes ah, da, 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 should you really lead with race the moment you lead with race you know controversial subject controversial topic for controversy's sake and it's like no it's not controversy for controversy's sake it's just you know it's like no nah, like you know uh, this is supposed to be your thing's supposed to be about God's stuff it's like yes and I'm talking about how basically he wants to relate it to like how racism exists and that basically god really like is a a love and peace essentially like he's trying to go from like i think from like something like something of racism something of hatred to god's love i think that's like the journey he's supposed to be taking you on with that um but it's like the guy's like oh no no, sure and obviously uh him you know Kevin, which we saw in his class previously, like a lot of his other class members, it's like, yeah, like the fact is they're never going to let you say all that. They're going to basically whittle it down until it's nothing but God is love. And so kind of saying that your original message is going to get, you know, lost along the way because there's no way they're going to let you say something like that. And obviously he even goes to a meeting later on amongst like other people Kevin knows. Like it's kind of like a debate of ideas and stuff like that. And Kevin calls out one particular dude because it's like, right, you always jump from one. You start one thing and you abandon it partway through. Like you never stick through to something. But then, you know, um, David talks about his belief in um, his belief in. The church and everything, the God, everything, you know, and it's kind of, it's kind of, and it's something that has come up before, like even in season one, because Kristen had asked him, it's like, are, how are you okay with a lot of the issues? Like, once again, it's like, the church has a lot of issues, the whole, you know, molestation thing, so it's like, you know, he, that was a conversation, so he, even he recognizes, like, yeah, the church isn't great, it's like, yeah, even later on, it's like, oh, you were able to keep, Kevin's like, oh, you were able to keep your speech, he's like, yeah. It's like, yeah, I guess the church isn't as, it's uh, not as racist as we think. And he's like, yeah, I guess not. But it turns out, well, they don't need you to change your speech because it's not a full mass of people in his church. It's only like 20 altogether, which one of them ended up being Kristen and another ended up being Leland. Jerk has the the audacity to be there eating popcorn. And he's like, yeah, I'm here to support my spiritual counselor. And just kiss him a thumbs up and walks away. And it's just like, I love, I love this little nitpicking you do. And I just love that. That's just like, that's literally all you've done in the episode. It's just like, oh, you know, it's just like, that was just, that was your moment. That was like 20 seconds on camera. Just like, oh, here I am eating popcorn. And here I am to give you a thumbs up and move on. I just, I love that. But I guess it's like, 
like, I guess, like, to break someone of their faith and just kind of destroy their image of, like, the faith that they hold on to, it's going to take, you know, little, little, you don't do it in full-blown, like, stabs. You do it in little jabs here and there, you know? Poke someone enough, they're going to bleed, you know, poke enough holes in someone and they're going to bleed as much as, like, you know, it's, it's a weird metaphor I'm going for. I'm going to drop the weird metaphor. I just, I think he's just going to poke and prod a little bit rather than trying to rip it all down at once. It's like, right, slowly but surely to the point you won't even notice it's happening. I think it's kind of the whole point. I thought that was kind of interesting, too, because, like, because of David is being, this season he is being torn between, like, right, like, everything related to school. Because he is, like, two months away from being able to become, like, a full-blown priest and everything, I believe. So... The fact is, like, the show kind of splitting that, like, making it so, like, because even Kristen and David, they're, like, working at an assessment, and they're like, well, we actually don't, because, like, oh, your son Wyatt, like, oh, we don't, you should probably call the police, we don't really do that, we, and then Kristen and Ben are looking at each other, and, like, it's the weird thing of, like, right, the non-believers of the team have to be the one to kind of explain what they do, it's like, normally we kind of leave this up to David, because it's also more so coming from David being the priest in training, like, he's the one actually fully accredited and connected with the church they're just kind of associated by well association so i just thought that was so fascinating but um it turns out like you know why it has like a pentagram on his floor which i'm like when would he have been able to draw that that's when i'm well i guess no because i was about to say because we find out this is all related to the elevator game because i i guess in my head i was thinking like the elevator game is the first time like when we see it in the episode like that was the first time he plays like no he'd already played it multiple times because the whole point of the pentagram is to um it's supposed to be, uh, it's supposed to help you if you're being haunted, which is interesting because, like, Kristen hasn't fully dealt with that. I mean, I guess that gin thing kind of eventually moved on. Maybe it, maybe the whole thing with the little girl at the end of the last episode burning stuff was kind of supposed to be like, and it went back to her. Like, it got tired of being with Kristen and decided, like, yeah, I, I'm, my time with you's done and I'm going back. Maybe that's what that's supposed to represent. Maybe it's not. Like, I'm just, that, that was never, like, fully settled that at least that we were aware not less while that was i mean i didn't i'm trying to remember after the exorcism did the gin ever pop up for Kristen again i mean i think it did i mean she was still kind of continuing that behavior to a certain extent yeah because i think she had looked outside and the gin was like outside like so yeah i was about to say not less while they were trying to exercise a the girl they were inadvertently exercising Kristen. But maybe the argument is that that was supposed to be what that was. Like maybe that was the gym saying bye, and it went back to the girl. I should have brought that up last episode. I didn't think about it. I could be completely wrong. Regardless, this is this episode, but still, it's just kind of interesting. Like, oh, you're being haunted again because you already had the whole thing with George, now a gin, and potentially whatever this whole. Well, I mean, she does get her third haunting of the day. Like, I think that's that seems like that's going to stack when you get haunted that much by different stuff. Like demons a djinn a ghost like i think i think the supernatural like element to that that stacks up against you like it's almost like a, here's a bar of supernatural hauntings and you're like you're peaking right now because they're just it's one after another i mean that realm of stuff has touched your life in so many regards especially considering like one of your daughters is part of this whole like demonic conspiracy to kind of like bring like quote-unquote evil children like you know kind of almost some like omen level type of stuff into this where it's just something to think about regardless um but yeah this whole elevator game uh thing was interesting um once again i think it's always the cutest thing when like uh when kristen's with her kids you know like oh that's such a it's such a cute thing but i also love the fact is that um i thought it was weird that she brought her kids to this case uh, you know what I also think it was really interesting? Notice what daughter wasn't involved. Lexi, granted, that was because, like, oh, you have, like, math tutoring or whatever. And I love what the youngest one being like, I'm sorry we're so good at math or something. Like, we, we're we better at math than you or something like that. I was like, the shade your sis your little sister is throwing your way. That's wild. Um, but I just think it's interesting that the one that's kind of connected to all this stuff, like, to a certain extent, is the one that didn't get involved with the elevator game and thought that's fascinating but um i just thought it was weird that kristen brought her kids at all i'm like isn't that a little inappropriate i guess because of the nature of things she didn't think it was that crazy i mean it's like well they understand the game a little bit better than her even though like they kind of showed her i just thought that was interesting also once again the fact is david's not with them most of the investigation i found so fascinating as well uh but basically it's about a dude named wyatt who 
played the game and it's like, well, looking at the elevator and everything, it's like, well, he never got off, but there's no cameras to the roof. So the police are just thinking like he ran away. And so for them, it's like, oh yeah, like he must have gotten to the roof and then climbed down by the stairs or something like that and disappeared. So the cops aren't really, really looking into it like they should. Um, but obviously they tried playing the elevator game, um, which I love Chris was like, do you feel stupid now? He's like, I've never stopped feeling stupid when it came to doing stuff for this job. Um, but then it turns out there is no actual 13th floor, so technically they can't finish the game, but then they run into, like, a girl who's like, no, are you playing an elevator game? You shouldn't do that. It's for real. And Because she was on the phone with her friend Felicia, who was dating Wyatt, but she disappeared, too, like, a month after he disappeared, so, and she was on the phone with her, and it's just... You know, they never found her either. They just believe, like, oh, they ran off. And I love that, like, once again, it's a creepy element of, like, right, her daughter's being there with her, too, and everything. Once again, I'm like, would Kristen before all this, because I'm like, I don't, because, once again, because of that season one finale, the whole LaRoe thing, I don't think Kristen's really the, she's not the same person. So I'm wondering, is that a decision she normally would have made? Could this be the aftermath of, like, the gin thing as well? I don't know. It just, it, it. And once again, like, who the hell am I to say as a parent? But I'm just, I feel like you wouldn't take your, this ain't one of those, I mean, I guess the nature of, well, this nature of your job when it's something like this. I'm, I'm also a little superstitious, too. Like, I, I've known those trends. Like, what's it? What's that game, the Charlie game from, like, years ago? Never touched that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm good. There's Because, like, that stuff can, like, maybe, like I said, I'm, I'm weird. I think I am a bit superstitious, so I don't mess with that type of stuff. I've, I've never messed with the Ouija board either, or spirit board, because Ouija is copywritten. It's one of those interesting things. Like, oh yeah, like, Ouija is a very specific uh, brand of a uh, spirit board. But it's just it's just one of those um, things. Of like, I I don't touch the supernatural. It's like, I, you know, why why take a chance, right? So, which I find so ironic, considering I watch so much stuff that's related to the supernatural, and I love it. Like, it's supernatural stuff. It's like some of, like one of my favorite genres in general. Always has been. I, I, the irony is not lost on me in that regard, but um, you don't know what you're messing with type of thing. That that phrase is always going to be stuck in my head forever. Uh, regardless, um, God, I, I went on that huge tangent. I got a lost mind. Right. I just I just feel like normally Kristen wouldn't bring her kids, but to bring them along is interesting. I love that it's like they're like, oh, can we go? And she's like, no, 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 no. At first she's like, no, you're not going to do the elevator again. And then the guy's like, you, can, they, I can watch them. And then Kristen is quiet. It's a few second pause from her, the kids, and then it's like, all right, everybody back in the elevator. I felt so bad for that guy because especially when the kids leave, he's almost waving like, oh, but oh, okay. You almost feel bad for that dude. Um, it's also cool, you know, Ben hanging around, because like, oh, Brenda Magnificent, I, th that, the youngest, she's super adorable, because she's the one kind of doing the voices, Brenda Magnificent, like, she's the one doing that stuff, it's like, it's, dude, uh, once again, that's an adorable last family, um, once again, kind of sad, the circumstances surrounding this adorable last family, but regardless, um, but yeah, couldn't complete the elevator game because their technical is no 13th floor and finding out about Felicia and everything. And then they do the one thing. I mean, I guess it's a horror story to a certain extent. And I was like, and then like, you know, I was like, don't do it by yourself. I was like, don't do anything by yourself. Well, first, I, circling back really quickly, I love that Ben calls up Vanessa. I was like, yeah, I was like, okay, so how did, we never actually found out what happened because Ben never gave any answers to that. Like that episode, he's debating, he's like, come on, she might be a little crazy. So what? You're missing out on a chance to get laid. She's very attractive. Yeah, she might be a little crazy, but come on. Um, which I, once again, the irony behind the fact is that he might be going a little crazy this season. Um, I don't think it's crazy. I think he's legitimately being tortured because I, once again, I think this is, yeah, they got Kristen. Yeah, she's good. And she's in the sense of like, yeah, she's corrupted. We're, we're good. We're, we've worn her down. Now let's work on Ben and then like, oh, it's going to make get to David so much easier. Once again, that's my thought process. So like this whole like demon situation, but, um. And I finally did look into it, because I, I should also answer that. Like, I was curious, like, are Incubus and Succubus the same thing? I always thought they were, but I finally looked it up and said, yeah, they are. They're just, like, the male and female equivalent of the same thing. Um, so, once again, she got an Incubus, uh, Ben's getting a Succubus, so. Uh, regardless. Uh, but the fact is, the whole Vanessa thing, she's like, right, you haven't called me in, like, a month? Because I'm like, right, it actually hasn't been that long since season one. You know, so it's like, right, we still never got an answer to what happened. I'm assuming they knocked boots, and that's probably also why she's like, oh, you're not going to call me afterwards? You know, even though they hit it off. Uh, but it's like, right, he's getting her help with the elevator game thing, because this is kind of in her wheelhouse as well. 
And so basically we learned a little bit more about the elevator game that this is also related to a woman who died in, what was it, like, the, it was, I forgot the actual date, but basically her dog ran out and basically the elevator went up when she was reaching out and basically got cut in half. I immediately was so stupid because I was like, cause when she was like, tick, tick, they call it tick, tick, because of like the sound she makes when she's clawing on the floor. And I thought, I mean, I was like, well, how can it be both hands? You said she got clawed in half, and I mean, cut in half. And I was like, oh yeah, because I'm stupid. Because later on we get, I was like, oh, right. Horizontally, that makes more sense than me being the idiot I am thinking vertically. Um, but I was like, oh, that's super messed up. And obviously when Ben tells that story, and I love that literally him, uh, Kristen, and David all like pop their drinks and drink at the same time. I was like, I love how synchronized that was. That basically Kristen tried to do the game alone. And once again, it was like, don't do it alone. Obviously, it's like, once again... Because you've seen enough horror, super natural related stuff, you're like, never do anything alone. I mean, granted, just eat, I mean, things are worse when you're alone. You're, you're just as screwed uh, if you're with somebody, but at the very least, you you feel at least a little safer. Because, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's a placebo effect, but I feel like you're a little safer if you're in a group. But that doesn't mean anything. The supernatural can still get you at any point in time. But um, I thought that was interesting, like how it was done. It's like, right. Um, Kristen basically stopped it in between floors before it went to the 12th to the 14th. She stopped it and it just kind of locks in place because there technically is no 13th. There is actually no 13th floor. And they even got a, the answer later on. I'm like, why isn't there? I mean, technically it's probably because, well, because, um, well, for one, it is a superstition because 13 is unlucky. I forgot what number it is. Um, I know in some Asian cultures, I want to say, is it Japanese? I could be mistaken. Is it... I don't remember. It's, there's a, there is an unlucky number. It's like, is it, I think it's seven. I think seven's the unlucky number in Japanese. I could, I think it's, it's, it's something, it's, it's an Asian culture where I believe seven's an unlucky number. Cause I think I remember finding out like, right, in other culture, it's a, it's considered a lucky number, but I think in some, maybe it's not seven. I don't remember. I only know this because I, one, uh, Star Ocean 3 till the end of, time if I remember if that being a subtitle there's like a whole bit between like um was it Sophia and fate they had the whole conversation about that at the hotel like oh yeah like certain cultures that's like it might it might even been the number three or four I don't remember like there's just certain numbers like aside from 13 that are considered unlucky in other cultures I think probably every culture probably has their unlucky numbers it just made me think about that but um yeah and then I was like okay I was like, oh, God, Kristen. And then she immediately, like, goes out halfway. I was like, don't do that, Kristen. And then she sees something in the distance, and she's still looking at it, and then the elevator does its thing and captures her, and it's just like, oh, God, oh, God. And this creepy lady that got cut in half, I was like, oh, Kristen. And she looks away at one point in time and then looks back and there's no body, just the blood. I'm like, I was like, I thought she was going to look back and see nothing. No, she looked back and she saw the trail of blood and like, where the hell is that? lady and she's there and she attacks Kristen and Kristen luckily gets the elevator fixed and she leaves because she's she's mad at Kurt she's like Kurt you told me those pills were going to help me stop hallucinating stuff in fact I'm actually seeing more because she actually popped one earlier in the episode because she heard some she took a ticket and she thought it was the lady but it's like oh it was her mom secretly working on a computer who's like oh yeah I should probably stay closer by you know a bed and everything it's like yeah my, my therapist said I should be closer to my grandchildren and stuff like that my is it still Kurt? I would assume not, because Kurt was going to hook you up with someone. But I'm like, who's this new therapist? Like, it, is it going to be someone that's connected to Leland or something? I don't know. I was like, I don't... I, I, I don't know. I don't know, man. Just, once again, like, uh, Cheryl's on that list of, I don't know about you, Cheryl. I don't know. You've been, you've been wilding for a while now, and just all the shenanigans from before of, like, getting back into Kristen's life now. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm keeping my eye on you, Cheryl. It's just all that is. Um, but the fact is that, um, yeah, she now thinks like, oh, makes you wonder though, like, could someone have messed with her medication where it is supposed to stop hallucinations, but is causing it? At least maybe that's Kristen's, well, her justification for it. Because once again, the whole George thing, she still considers it like a dream because she knows like oh now she thinks like well George came from like this particular movie that the girls are watching like that's most likely where that came from it like that whole bit right 
from last season. So she's, you know, she's going to justify it by being like, oh, the pills and stuff like that. I'm wondering, I believe that's all, you know, it's just the, the supernatural stuff. Hell, once again, it's, this is the biggest problem with this. No one's talking because Ben isn't talking about being haunted by the thing that he's being haunted by. And the fact of the matter is, um, because I don't know Ben knows about the George thing. Like, the only person who knows about George is David. And even then, it's like, Chris didn't talk about it with David beyond the first episode. So, there's that. So, it, they haven't come to the, like... Because Ben's not going to bring it up because he thinks he's crazy. She's not going to bring it up because she thinks she's crazy. But you should correlate and connect to be like, Oh, there's something up with that. Oh, you, you have... Wait, you're... Like, it's going to happen at some point in the season. It has to of like, wait, you had that? You're having that right now. I had that some time ago, and this is my trick to it and everything. So, we'll see. There's, I'm just, just that's the problem. No one's talking because later on, it's like, oh, like Ben's like, oh, have, you know, it's like, oh, have you tried stopping in between the floors? Is what the 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 lady who does like the scary guides does and it says, and it's like Kristen's like, oh, I tried it, and Ben's like, what happened? She's like, nothing. I'm like, why are you lying, Kristen? Because, well, to be fair, because your rational brain is trying to be like, no, that's not real. That's not what happened. Um, but then your boy Ben does it by himself. I'm like, why do you guys keep doing stuff alone? And then Ben figures it out. It's like, right, not push, pushing the two button, pushing two buttons. So pushing one and three at the same time. And that takes, basically the elevator goes down to zero. So I guess it's more like a basement area. And he goes in there and it's like, okay. The moment, I'm like, okay. I was like, okay, good. He kept the elevator open. I'm like, so you're going to put something down to keep the elevator you didn't put anything to keep the elevator open. Okay, Ben. Okay. Okay. Hopefully it isn't. And he sees something. I'm like, okay, what we're going to see. He sees a body. I'm like, okay. I knew it was going to be a dead body, but I thought what we're going to see is like, it seemed like it was moving. I was like, oh, there's going to be a rat in the skull or something moving around. And it's like, oh no, it's just a whole bunch of bugs. They end up finding Wyatt and um, Felicia. They both died. And the door closes. And you're like, no, Ben. I'm like, how do you? How, how are you going to get out of it? I was like, well, you're, you're, you're kind of a more techie dude. Maybe you'll find a... Okay, you're stuck. The button's screwed. They got stuck down here. Cool. And even Ben kind of being like, realizing what happened. It's like, right. Saying that um, Wyatt was probably the first one to die. Like, he probably starved down there because he was down there for a month before Felicia found him. But, you know, at, you know, um, it's probably a thing of like, right, he probably screamed to you to keep the door open but you weren't thinking about it at the time and you know so you ended up you know and it's like right you were here to cuddle him to keep the bugs away but Ben's like I'm down here alone who's going to keep the bugs away from me and he gets visited by his favorite succubus in this moment in this time it's like every it's like right he's um in this alone uh, David and Kristen like, both got calls from Ben. Like, she was like, yeah, Ben's calling me like five times. He's like, yeah, he's calling me like three times. Like, what? when's the last time you saw him and talked to him? Like, well, last night. So, luckily, they went back to investigate at, you know, the elevator game thing. Um, but, you know, Ben's kind of worried. I mean, he doesn't have much on his power left on his phone. And the demon's, like, referencing something his grandmother told him when he was young. Being like, oh, that's it's kind of jacked up how that is. And it's like, um, and he's like, yeah, it's just meant to be like a be observant is kind of like the moral of like the proverb that was kind of told to him and she's like just lay down with me like don't worry um right um basically it's like because he i think he's leaving a message for his sister it's like right that way she and you know the demon's like oh yeah that way uh people realize like oh they didn't treat you the best way that they could have and he's like david for thanks for being a friend he's like good oh tell him at the end you found uh christ or something like that that'll really like mess with like that'll really mess with his head and then it's like oh Kristen, and it's like oh you and your daughters it's like oh you should leave them a gift don't worry i'll take a picture of your body or, or you should leave them something it's like oh your body don't worry i'll take a picture of it you know but for ben he's like at least like her being there gives him something it gives him he knows what he's fighting against but luckily uh david and Kristen figured it out and he's like keep the door open and he rushes in and it's just like so i mean at least there's some solace knowing like you know wyatt and felicia were found after all this time but like ben is frazzled 
And I'm curious, you know, after this, he the next episode we'll probably see him. He's gonna be like, I oh, am yeah, fine. Yeah, I was a little weirded out, but I, I'm good. But immediately, like, he gets on the elevator, and then like the demons there waiting. And I, I like that. that being like, okay, so once again, he's thinking like because he's used to her coming to him in his dreams, and now it's like white, right? I'm wide awake. Because I think maybe that's also what he was thinking, like, right, like, I must have fallen asleep or something right now, so I know what I'm fighting against. Or at least, like, at least I'm probably thinking, like, you're a manifestation because I'm kind of going wild, right? I'm going crazy right now in this dark place. I kn I'm, I'm, death is on my mind, so my mind conjured you to give me something, I guess, to kind of fight against. To have an adversary, like, to keep me around long enough. But now it's like, right, she follows you into the elevator, too, so no getting rid of her. I feel like she's going to be sticking around a lot longer than George did. But, you know, we'll, we'll ultimately have to wait and see how things come. But, well, to be fair, George did kind of go from Kristen to one of her daughters. If I remember correctly, it was the youngest, wasn't it, that got freaked out by, um... Or was that Lexi? It was actually, it was Lexi that was, um, the one that got George... George was in her dreams, right? I believe it was, if I'm not mistaken. I th yeah, I thought it was the youngest one. I think it was George that was actually, I believe, I could be. Um, um, but yeah, crazy way to end off the episode. Like I said, just sinister, especially that zoom, like dark zoom out, especially because like all you see is the elevator and just nothing but darkness as it zooms out. I was like, ooh, that's a nice way to end the episode off. Because once again, it's like none of these are like happy endings or anything is like conclusive. They end these stories off on like a uh -huh. And I love that there's no like full blown resolution in certain regards. It just kind of like a it kind of leaves you unsettled. Every at the end of the episode, you're just like you don't get some satisfactory ending. I, I I don't know how to really phrase it. It's just it's really interesting the way this show is structured. It this already this season is creepy and just can, this show once again I forgot how weird season one is. Man, they bumped it up for season two. Season two is weird, dude. And I, I cannot wait for the next episode. Uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, a little life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good.